we were told they should be institutionalised. But we've been experiencing miracles. In Kent, a detached house stands surrounded by high fences and padlocks. But the Montague family aren't trying to keep people out. They're trying to protect their twin boys, Samuel and Jacob. The boys were diagnosed with autism when they were two and a quarter. It was quite evident there was something not quite right um, with them. You'd come home from work and there's no response. Mark would just come in, hello boys, and they would just ignore him. I got nothing back from them at all. Didn't feel they loved us, did we? No, no. Um, they didn't have any emotion, interaction, no expressions. So we just cared for them, loved them and fed them. And that was our life. As the boys grew older, their behaviour became more destructive. They wrecked everything. It soiled everywhere, threw up everywhere, um, threw food, smeared food, everything that could be broken and twisted and snapped was done. The Zoe house is being utterly trashed every day of the week and you could have nothing. Because of the boys' behaviour, we couldn't have any furniture. Everything had to be screwed down. Screwed down and up high just trashed the place, just pull it apart. Both boys have escaped from here probably five or six times between them. Um, we've had to have the police involved, helicopters, police dogs. And that's why we needed such a high fence all round, because they were just escape artists. Despite trying to find help, they were told time and time again that their son's behaviour would never improve. The first time I ever came in to the family and met them, um, I remember walking in and uh, my first sight was seeing Annie. She was sobbing her heart out and there was a social worker telling her to put her boys into an institution. Every professional advised us, but most of all for them. Put it's them into, res into residential. So it wasn't just um, experts, it was also friends and family. And we, did, we went and had a look at two residential <coughs> schools and you can't get any lower than that as, as parents to go and find <coughs> an alternative um, place for your children to live. We talked and talked and talked and we both just couldn't do it. We just could not give them up. Determined to keep their family together, Annie and Mark began looking into treatments for their son's autism. They came across a pioneering treatment called the Sunrise Program. Unlike other methods, it was designed by parents of a severely autistic child. You were sceptical. I was, to be honest. But I went along to support Annie. The Sunrise Program is a relationship-based therapy. So it's about an understanding that autism is primarily a social relational disorder. Autism is about a person's difficulty being able to connect and interact and form relationships with another person. Our approach is going down to sort of the root cause of what is going on for that child. It was an absolute eye-opener because the people who were, were teaching it had a direct involvement with autism. One of the main techniques of the program is to stop trying to change the children's autistic behavior and instead join in with them. Mark and Annie immediately saw results. His autistic children are well known, you just, you just can't get eye contact. The first time, you, you will never forget because they've never done it before. And um, I was at the table and I was just joining him, spinning, and suddenly he stopped spinning and just looked up and looked straight into my eyes. And there was a look on his face as if to say, you, you know what I'm doing, you're with me. It was a wonderful experience, and you never forget it. And then, of course, you're now in their world, and over time, kind of slightly changed the activity, and without them knowing, 
they copy new, gradually bringing them into our world. And things start to happen that experts said was impossible, would never happen. But we've been experiencing miracles. So much for looking at me, that is amazing. You're really gonna do a little scratch. Hey, thank you for looking back. Nice. I've seen them change in quite a profound way in terms of their ability to follow instructions, the, the level of calmness that they have, their desire to want to try to communicate. <laughs> the Montagues were initially told their boys would never speak to them, but since the Sunrise program, they've started to communicate very slowly. I was told the boys would see you, me, no different than, say, the postman. I was just a person that would help them and feed them. Don't expect to get anything back, but now I can see they love their mum. I can't deny it. They come up to they me, cuddle, they, they cuddle, kiss. they kiss. They interact. Now Annie and Mark are hoping to raise money to attend a further course in America, which should help them see even more improvements. I think any parent would should aspire to be Annie and Mark. I couldn't tell you what they've gone through. They've never once given up on their boys. They've kept their family together. To any parents who find themselves where we were 10 years ago, who have maybe recently been given the diagnosis, don't listen to all the doom and gloom. Every aspect of, of their life, and ours too, has been massively improved. You know, that's, that's not an exaggeration. We've got two little boys now who are loving, they interact, they're caring, and they're part of the family. Every expert said that would never happen, it'd be impossible. The future for Jacob and Samuel since, since the Sunrise programme is limitless.